what do you think are parameters that will somehow cause people either uh, to travel more again? Any indication that people are starting to consider traveling again? And I think our last uh, piece of sale, last June 12, where we saw a spike in bookings, you know, after a long time uh, that talagang mababa yung bookings, nag-spike siya. Um, that is an indication that people are still willing to travel, just not at this time. Hi everyone, we're in for another treat today. We have the Director for Corporate Communications of Cebu Pacific, Charo Lagarta Lagamon, here in the podcast. Thank you so much for joining us, Charo. Hi, Marvin. Hi um, to all your viewers um, in your podcast. And uh, thank you for having me. So this is a very, very interesting time to have you because uh, in this entire lockdown slash pandemic, uh, aside from mass gatherings, tourism, which Cebu Pacific is a very, very large part of, is one of the biggest hit businesses. So before I begin with my questions, uh, how Cebu Pacific in all of this? How are you guys doing? How's the operation? What's the biggest, uh, I guess, change in all of this? It's really very difficult times. It's a challenging time for a lot of airlines. Kasama dyan ng Cebu Pacific. Very painful decision. We've, we've had to retrench about 800 of our uh, colleagues. And then that's on top of the 200 or so that took an optional retirement program so that they could pursue their other endeavors. So it's not just a painful decision on a business point of view, but also from an organizational point of view. Kasi ang Cebu Pacific, we're like a community. The fact that we are not able to say goodbye to our colleagues because most of us are working from home is already painful as it is. Understandable. Uh, for the company also to stay afloat, there has to be some adjustments. And I think this is a bit conservative pa nga compared to what other airlines in other countries have done. I've seen uh, other airlines that totally shut down their operations already because of this. Do you think this will be the last of it? Or uh, there's still more to come in terms of stashing work personnel as well? It's hard to say. It's a very volatile situation. At this point, there's no clarity. We don't know if this is rock bottom or if things are going to get better. The nice thing is that we are able to restore or resume our operations. But um, quite frankly, it's a very far cry from where we used to be post-2019. Can you share percentage-wise how many planes were, just, were flying from, I guess, before the lockdown? at the height of the lockdown then to where we are, are right now also? At the end of 2019, Cebu Pacific had 75 aircraft. So that's the Airbus jets, the ATR turboprops, which we use for inter-island. Um, and we had an ATR all cargo uh, freighter. We were flying roughly about 400 flights per day. That's the extent of the network. Um, and that's about 50, 60,000 passengers per day. Today, we are able to fly just 10% of that number. So that's what, 40, 50 flights per day. We're only flying to about 18 domestic destinations. We have no international routes yet. We have thousands of passengers that are stranded, thousands that we have to refund. And so it's a very challenging time. Given that uh, we are, at least Metro Manila is in GCQ, then other provinces are already starting to open up, then other cities around the world are starting to open up. Do you see this somehow that you're going to expand your capacity in the next in the next quarter or at least the second half of the year? Well, that was the intention. When we had confirmed that uh, government would be allowing uh, air travel the first week of June, no? we were hoping that we would be able to get to about 20 domestic destinations and at least 20% of our flight network would be restored. Unfortunately, that did not happen. Happen. Um, and the primary reason for that is because uh, there are local authorities that are still averse to receiving flights. Um, and this is a very understandable situation because they would like to manage the risk from people coming back from Manila who are potentially infected by COVID. Um, at the local level, as you know, there's not a lot of capacity for health services. And it's very understandable how the local authorities are reacting. So given that there's a lot of planes that are not flying right now, of course, as everyone knows that uh, the longer planes are not flying, the bigger the cost that entails uh, for Cebu, Cebu Pacific. How, how are you handling uh, all of the costs attached to it? Uh, how are you also managing at least uh, the OPEX uh, in this, 
at least for this new normal that you're experiencing. We entered 2020 with a very healthy cash balance of about 18 or 19 billion pesos. So we had reserves. When COVID broke out, um, obviously, revenue stopped there because bookings dropped. Um, but you still have expenses, you still have costs. From the very start, even if we had the reserves, management decided to try to be more prudent about what we spent on. So what did that entail? It really entailed deferring a lot of projects, projects that did not involve improving customer experience or making operations more efficient were temporarily uh, postponed. We also reduced working hours uh, across the board and management agreed to a pay cut. What was taken from our salaries was uh, given to the other employees so that it, it could stretch the salaries of other people for a bit longer. Um, but you know, it reached a point where we've been in this situation for more than three months already and it reached a point where we went through a transformation program to see how the future would look like for aviation post-COVID and what would be necessary to operate Cebu Pacific. So in terms of operations, how many people, how many aircraft, um, all of these things were taken into account. And um, one of the initiatives of, that stemmed from that was the right sizing of the manpower. And so thus the decision rather uh, to let go of some of our colleagues. No one knows what will happen. There's no vaccine yet. There's still no cure. Uh, what's Cebu Pacific's plan if this drags on, say, for a year or two? That what we're seeing right now is what will still prevail over the next few months. I think that's the reason why, over the span of this quarantine period, um, that we decided to go into a transformation program for Cebu Pacific. We look at the various scenarios from the worst possible scenario that this pandemic drags on for the next one to two years. Um, what are the, the best cases, worst case scenario? And decided from there, what will the future look like? And I think that this transformation program puts Cebu Pacific in a position to rapidly respond to what post-COVID will look like in terms of what will the passenger experience be like? What will would be the uh, safety protocols that will be in place. Um, what are the new normal for travel? Um, and so these were steps that were necessary so that we could respond and be agile enough to, to adapt to those changes. Speaking of those changes, no, uh, if this will be the new normal for the next year or so until a, va uh, until a vaccine comes out, uh, what measures have you placed in? If I'm a passenger, how do I feel that I'm safe or at least I can travel back again or I can go back to somewhat a semblance of what it was before this pandemic started? The common misperception or misconception rather uh, of people is that being inside an aircraft or an airplane cabin is like being in a restaurant or an office where it's a closed air-conditioned space. Yes, it is, but there's a difference. Inside the aircraft, when you fly, air is not quote-unquote stale. It's actually recirculated, pababasha, um, and then that used air is flushed out of the cabin and fresh air from outside is taken in. In that entire process of circulating air, uh, in the cabin, there are high efficiency particle uh, filters or HEPA filters are in the air filtration system. And these filters are the same ones used in operating rooms of uh, the tertiary hospitals. So it's hospital grade air and they block out contaminants and viruses, bacteria with 99.99% efficiency. Even if there's you know, you're seated right beside the person. For as long as this person doesn't directly, you know, spit on you or put body fluids on you, you're safe, relatively speaking. Um, and for as long as passengers are also conscious of their own hygiene, they wash their hands frequently, they wear their face masks, disinfect their hands, um, and don't touch their face, then the risk of being contaminated uh, while in flight is quite minimal. Mm. Um, also, there are a lot of measures. Aviation is different levels of safety protocols. It's not just the mask, it's not just the disinfection, it's not just physical distancing. So there is also a process now of disinfecting aircraft and cleaning. So this is before you start the day um, and after all of the flights of that aircraft are done for the day, there is a protocol of cleaning and disinfection. So this involves um, misting, spraying of disinfectant and all of these chemicals uh, that are approved for use for aviation. 
On top of that, in between flights, there is also a cleaning regimen that happens. Um, that's why if you notice now um, in, in the flight schedules, the ground time is actually longer because it takes into account the process of cleaning. It also takes into account that uh, when you board the plane and you deplane passengers, it's by row, so the process is longer. On top of that, every 30 minutes, the cabin crew have to clean the lavatories with these uh, specialized antibacterial wipes, regardless of whether the plane is in operation or not. What if you inupuan ko the flight before me, uh, someone was asymptomatic, and then I would be sitting in the same seat? So that means that everything that you're doing to sterilize, to clean, uh, kill all the bacteria, that's enough already to make at least uh, the next passenger who would sit on it a bit safe. Does it give people a semblance that, okay, na to, this is enough measures for me to be able to travel again? Across the board, the entire aviation industry has historically responded better to biosecurity risks. Prior to COVID, we had MERSCO, we had SARS. Mm. So uh, the aviation industry has uh, historically responded better to all of these threats and have put in place different uh, measures to protect passengers. There are guidelines and protocols for this. Having said that, um, I think there's enough evidence also to show that um, when you fly, even if yung inupuan mo, merong umupo doon na nag-positive bigla na pasyente, the virus doesn't transfer from a seat to your clothing. Even if it does, for as long as your hands uh, you're, you don't touch your face, you don't touch your nose, your eyes, your mouth. Your risk is quite low for transmission. Cebu Pacific was known to be very, very aggressive that you were planning to expand routes, you were uh, renting planes, uh, purchasing planes. Uh, what happened to your plans to acquire more as well? We had signed agreements with uh, Airbus to purchase additional brand new aircraft and that program was supposed to run until 2026. Mm. There was a new one signed about a year or so ago and prior to that, there was an existing order already. So of course, there's uh, some discussions that are going on with uh, aircraft manufacturers um, to see how we can adjust and where we're going to be. Uh, in terms of these orders. Putting that sales are lower, then uh, oil has seen its ups and downs over the past months. How, how has that affected also revenue for the past few months as well? We posted a net loss for your first quarter of 2020. It's been a while, I think, uh, <laughs> since Cebu Pacific posted uh, a loss. I mean, even through high oil prices in past years, I think 2018, there was a lot of prudent cost management and uh, some hedging for fuel that went on that really helped manage our costs. This time around, yes, we are fortunate that oil prices are manageable. The foreign exchange rate is also manageable and so that helps mitigate the cost. But nonetheless, it's still not enough uh, to really offset the impact uh, brought on by COVID. What are the key specific items that you're looking at to say that, hmm, we think things are getting back to the way it was before? Uh, what, what do you think are parameters that will somehow cause people either uh, to travel more again? Any indication that people are starting to consider traveling again. And I think our last uh, piece of sale, last June 12, where we saw a spike in bookings, you know, after a long time uh, that talagang mababa yung bookings, nag spike siya. Um, that is an indication that people are still willing to travel, just not at this time. We just need to continue building over the near term uh, the confidence that we are doing everything possible to make travel safe and then it will come back. There is a latent demand for travel. Maybe it's not for vacation but to visit friends and relatives. So there is always inherent and latent demand, especially for domestic travel. We just need to make people confident that it is safe to travel. There was a lot of talk about it's, it's supply and demand. Lesser flights means that for them to be able to get this much revenue also, it's a possibility that prices should go up. Is that something that people could expect in the future or you think prices will remain where it is also to create still that level of demand given what's happening right now? There are two factors that will make people decide to travel. One is the confidence that it's safe to fly, that I'm okay to, 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 to travel again in this new normal. Second is you have to get them by pricing competitively. 
So making it really enticing, uh, giving people good deals. Today, when you book a Cebu Pacific flight, the, the fares are relatively the same. But there's a catch. When you book today, uh, we tack on our, a product called Seb Flexi. And what is Seb Flexi? Seb Flexi is like insurance. It's like free rebooking. So you are you can rebook your flight up to two times. Um, and then there will be no rebooking fees that are tacked on. Um, for, so for those just in case moments, um, at least you have that peace of mind that you can easily rebook your flight. There will come a point in time where masasanay na yung mga tao that uh, mm-hmm. similar to uh, the flu, similar to AIDS, similar to other types of sickness that uh, people will be more careful. We will go back to traveling, but I, again, it will also take uh, some time also for people to get used to it. You know, in 2001, 9/11 happened. I mean, sure, it's a different circumstance, and it's the the magnitude of the flights disrupted um, and the impact to global air travel is not as big as COVID. But you know what? People will were also saying that oh my God, I don't want to travel anymore. It's so scary. Blah blah blah. But years later, people were traveling. Iba lang, may new normal. So what, ano ba yung new normal ngayon? Di ba, when you go inside, bago ka pumasok ng airport, madaming x-ray. And, and all of these things were born or came out of 9-11. And nasanay tayong lahat. Uh, we all still flew. And um, I'm confident that, you know, at some point in time, we will all be traveling again in this new normal. How did different recessions also affect uh, Cebu Pacific and air travel in general. Uh, 1997 Asian financial crisis, 2008 global crash, then today. Mm-hmm. How different is this uh, to air travel? There was a dip, yes, in demand, but these were pocket parang weaknesses. But oh, all in all, nagba bounce back din siya because again, um, for the Philippines especially, now we are an archipelago, there is really a demand for air travel that hindi yan mawawala. Plus, we have a, a lot of OFWs. Mm. We have a lot of migrant Filipinos. And so, there is that base uh, of people who will need to travel to and from the Philippines. Mm. Any final words to people who are anxious, depressed, don't know what's happening right now? Any words of encouragement for them? These are really very unprecedented and challenging times, um, not just for aviation, not just for Cebu Pacific, um, for a lot of people, for you and me. It's uh, really a change. A lot of people have different mindsets now and there's anxiety because a lot of us are can't go out. We're, we're, we're really confined. We don't know what's going to happen yet, but definitely, you know, there, there are always ways for us to cope and overcome. Once again, we're putting in all of the measures in place. We're, we're, everything, everything is being done so that we can go back to a, some kind of normal. And um, for Cebu Pacific, everyone will fly again. So it's just a matter of time. Well said and ended in a very optimistic note. So please remember, and I, I say this all the time, uh, recessions are cyclical. It's not a matter whether a recession will happen, but it's only a question of when. But in the same way, recoveries are too. So it's not a question whether we will recover, it's a question of when. So if you believe that air travel will be there still and people will continue to travel, either you're a consumer of Cebu Pacific or an investor, uh, put your cash where you plan to actually use it. Meaning, if you're gonna travel, you just set aside the cash parent so that when you feel comfortable or ready to travel, uh, then it's a then you have capital to deploy for that travel. And if you're an investor also, and you believe that uh, it will come back and you have a very, very long time horizon, but please, uh, after this video, study it also. Check. There's so many things to uh, check Check out. Charo mentioned that they have cash. Check, check out the balance sheets. Check out also uh, once things start to open, how much people, uh, how many people will actually travel because, again, that will also affect how revenue will be. But, at the end of the day, whatever you do, regardless if it's for travel and for uh, investing, never decide just based on emotions. Uh, and, and right now, it's very, very, uh, we easily get tugged by fear. Uh, that's that's how some people decide on it. But uh, every time you're going to try to decide whether it be investing or for your consumption, uh, take a pause, then study everything, look at the numbers, and then that's when you start to decide. So. Thank you so much, Charo Lugar Talagamon, Cebu Pacific, for Thank joining Thank you us. also. And Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. And for to everyone, I hope this video helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. See you all again soon and God bless you all.